They saw the flames. They smelled the smoke. A UFO had crash-landed just a few miles from Le Mans, France, where today they hold the famous auto race. But it did not happen today. It happened 225 years ago. France, 1790. Seven years after the Montgolfier brothers became the first men to achieve flight in a hot air balloon decorated with gold figures. The French Revolution was one year old. King Louis and Marie Antoinette both still had their heads. But the violence of the revolution barely touched the people of Alençon. That city had something else to worry about. At five o'clock in the morning, on June the 12th, some farmers watched as a massive sphere flew over their heads, and it was on fire. Only a handful of men in their city had ever seen a Montgolfier balloon, and a few still refused to believe that man could fly. But the Montgolfier flights had created a sensation. At the market, you could buy balloon engravings, balloon back chairs, balloon shaped clocks, and kitchenware decorated with pictures of balloons. Even these provincials had a hard time believing that this was a balloon. It made a shrill, high shrieking noise as it tore through the atmosphere, traveling at high velocity. Next, it slowed down and could be seen wobbling on its axis. Then it crashed against a hilltop. It was still intact, and the witnesses could see no damage to its surface. How reliable is this account? And how do we even know this? Because of the unrest caused by this incident, the elected council of the city of Alençon sent a petition to Paris to have this anomaly officially investigated. In response, a police inspector, a police inspector Leabouf, arrived shortly thereafter. This is the report of the police inspector. Before the globe came to rest, a scar was torn on the side of the hill. The sphere was so hot that the bushes nearby and the turf itself caught fire. The farmers at the site put out the fire. The mayor of Alençon and the mayor of Le Mans attended the site of the crash later that evening, along with three members of the council and a doctor and about 50 local residents. The globe was still warm to the touch. It was four meters in diameter, large enough to hold a stagecoach. There lingered the burnt smell of sulfur in the air. What happened next, Inspector Leobuff reports, was unthinkable and bordering on the impossible. In the craft opened a sort of door and out of this hatch stepped a being that looked like a man, dressed in a one-piece suit that adhered completely to its body. This being then addressed the gathered throng, but no one could understand its language. Suddenly the alien ran and disappeared into the adjoining forest. They searched for the pilot, to no avail. The report of the police inspector made its way to the Academy of Sciences, which existed to advise the French government on scientific matters. The Academy declared no person could land on the earth in such a manner and still be alive. They attributed the tale to the ignorance of French peasants. After the escape of the pilot, and out of fear, the people ran too. 
Maybe it was a good thing they did, because abruptly, spraying debris, the sphere disintegrated. And this happened, it is reported, without any sound. Almost as if the vehicle was dissolving, for not a single particle was left as evidence. Normally enlightened, in this case, the Academy of Sciences refused to send a representative to Alençon to see the hole left by the crash, which according to residents, remained visible for many years. I have seen some of the experiments shown in this film actually carried out